Today on QDL, how to make sure you deliver the best B2B e-commerce experience for your clients and for your company as well. All that when we come back. Welcome back to QDL. QDL is your look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. Well, I think all of us are familiar with consumer e-commerce platforms. Obviously, if you've been on to Amazon, uh, you're familiar with that. But also, there's a lot of just unique uh, business to commerce, uh, business to consumer platforms as well. I mean, you've probably used uh, platforms on your favorite online vendors. Maybe if you're a musician, you've been to uh, Guitar Center, or maybe Sweetwater. If you're a photographer, you've been to Adorama or B&H Photo. Uh, maybe you're a crafter, you've been to Michaels or Joann's, right? So you're familiar with um, business to consumer e-commerce platforms anytime you purchase products from those online sites. Now, these sites are usually using something uh, that's called a business consumer e-commerce platform, but your company, on the other hand, might be purchasing online as well from select parts and supplies vendors, and that would be a business to business e-commerce solution. That's a business selling to another business using some sort of online portal. And you might think that the expectations for transactions for both buyer and seller would be the same regardless of whether it's B2B or B2C, right? I and mean, people are going online, they're buying stuff. What's the difference, right? But th that isn't really true. What a business needs and expects from an e-commerce platform is not always the same as what a consumer needs or expects. And here to explain the difference is Yoav Kutner, co-founder and CEO of Oro Incorporated. Hello, Yoav. Thanks for joining us today. Hello, Dirk. Nice to meet you. Be here. Thank you for hosting us for this podcast. Sure. Well, just to set the stage a little bit, your current company, uh, Oro, is the company behind Oro Commerce and Oro CRM, but uh, you were also previous to Oro co-founder and CTO of Magento, which many people are f uh, familiar with as, a, as, I think, largely a B2C e-commerce platform. So you understand the needs and expectations of both of these markets, I think is fair to say? Uh, at this point of uh, my career, yes, I've uh, spent almost half the time uh, specifically in the B2C space and then uh, the last uh, eight plus years we're already uh, more dedicated to the B2B space, so yes. Okay, so from a B2B perspective, as I just kind of set up there, what is the problem with most B2B? C e-commerce platforms, or maybe a, a better way to put that, why don't B2C platforms work as well in a B2B environment? Um, you know, in the B2C, we talk about uh, customers that are usually one-time shoppers. They, um, they're very impulsive. They, they need sneakers. They'll go to some search engine like Google, put in the sneakers that they're looking for, find a few stores that sell them, click on the one that gives them the best price and hopefully some good user experience and then check out. Will there ever come back? Maybe, but as the stats say, usually that uh, you'll see most likely that they're one-time shoppers. When we talk about B2B buyers, uh, we talk about a, a process. We talk about something that might take weeks, maybe months, sometimes even years to complete an order because there's a process behind it. It might be that they're actually working on multiple uh, orders or contracts at the same time. So they might be multitasking on your website but most importantly, they usually have a relationship with you. Maybe it's the first time they're engaging with you, but once they, uh, in the B2B scenario, once they engage with the B2B seller, the B2B buyers usually establish a relationship. And this relationship is deep, meaning that it comes to um, maybe years, if not even longer. We, we see companies that are in business for over 100 years already with customers that they have for 60, 70 years already. And it's a deep relationship, and that goes into how we have to kind of approach a problem. So we're not just catering to the, co the lowest common denominator. We're not um, you know, addressing uh, teenagers and, uh, and parents in the same way. Uh, we're not focused on getting you in and out as fast as possible in the most intuitive way for the highest order value. We actually uh, have to focus on making your buyers be able to successfully use the website we're building for them in a way that actually helps them and makes it more productive 
for them to use the website rather than pick up a phone and talk to your uh, sales rep every time they have a question. Well, and, and that's uh, what we started being focused on. So, so what's okay? So your 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 product, uh, Oro Oro Incorporated's product, um, Oro Commerce. How would that differ? What that what would that experience look like? versus me going, you know, some of the companies I mentioned before, I go to Guitar Center in order mm -hmm. to buy some patch cords or something. I mean, how does that experience different um, than if my company was to use oral commerce to, to interface with some, some parts vendor? Uh, in the B2B use case, a lot of times the relationship starts from inquiries, from uh, questions about a product, maybe building a specific uh, RFP or RFQ, where we are asking for a quote or asking for a price from the seller before we actually put in the order, right? So we have these very complex um, kind of business uh, processes or workflows that go through the system and are very individual for the actual buyer that's using it. So again, Guitar Center is a great example because they actually do both, right? I mean, they do B2B and B2C sometimes. So they might have a complete different experience for the schools that are buying from them rather than an, a consumer that just logs into okay. Guitar Center and buys from them uh, a guitar or strings or whatnot. So it sounds like that one of the main differences is, is, I guess, the overall flow. I mean, just to be really simplistic, and l let's use Guitar Center again. Um, I might. I I'm just a consumer. I, I need to order, you know, uh, you know, a couple of microphone cords or something. I go on in there. Like you said, I'm a one-time guy. I go on there. I've got a microphone cord. Hey, that's a good price. I buy two or three of them. I'm done. Whereas a school might have ongoing and they need to be able to track those orders and maybe past orders and uh, basically there there's an, uh, a much longer process beginning to end and that's what you're able to track via oral commerce yeah it's not only track it's actually create the user experience for the buyers so again we, in b2b we're talking about buyers and sellers uh the buyer is the person that will be the consumer equivalent in the b2b world <clears throat> and their requirements from a website is completely different. Like, like in your example, again, with Guitar Center, if they're selling to a school, it could be that the buyer of the school already negotiated what items are available for the school to purchase. Uh, okay. uh, maybe you put a budget to every school that's logging in to purchase those, right? Um, maybe the pricing that they don't necessarily even have to see the pricing because the pricing is going to be billed back to the head uh, office or whatever of the school district. Um, and in that use case, you have to be able to kind of... Um, cater to the, to the school system in a very specific way for them to actually be able to uh, use the website. Also, so I know you guys have a CRM system, so I'm assuming then that that's the other aspect of it, is this is tied in to their customer uh, relationship management system uh, as well, right? So the oral commerce and oral CM kind of work together because it's all kind of, all of part of the bigger picture, right? So what we took actually, is took our CRM, which is a robust backend that allows the sales team to operate, and added the front end, which is the uh, kind of the buyer's portal or customer portal, and put them together in one system. And that's a big, again, differentiator if you, differ if you look at any of the other B2C uh, kind of uh, platforms that were built. Again, very basic backend to just manage catalog, maybe some uh, upload of content and stuff like that, but not much more than, than that. By us, you can actually R answer RFQs. You can create orders on behalf of customers. You can help them with their with their current orders. Uh, make sure that they're uh, that they're successful in uh, in actually putting in an order if they have any issues. Adjust pricing from them. Uh, update you know delivery dates and, and okay. so forth. So there's a lot of work that's done both on the back end as much as the front end. And our back end and front end are as flexible. We can actually service uh, many different scenarios where sales reps have to interact with uh, customers. They can actually use the application in the field if they go after COVID, hopefully it's over, we can see them back in the field. Uh, they can actually take their iPad with them or their phone, um, create quotes right there. So the, the user can then, uh, sorry, the customer can then just log in and see that order right in front of him or the quote right in front of him and then put in the order on his, from, uh, either on his behalf or on his own. From, from the sales person's point of view, um, I mean, I know uh, probably more so in a B2B context than in a B2C context, those relationships between the seller, you know, the, the salesperson and, and their client, um, 
are really important, right? And and I know I know a lot of salespeople like that interaction. They like the customer having to call them to ask a question because number one, it keeps it keeps them in the loop. They're able to have a conversation. Hey, how's the kids? How's things going? Maybe it gives them an opportunity to upsell them some other product, right? Um, and they like that interaction. And it seems to me that the more well, let me ask you, I mean, the more you automate this, are you taking away those opportunities for the salesperson to kind of build that relationship? Because it's like the customer can do everything they want in the back end, you know, other than maybe set the prices, right? One thing we really uh, kind of uh, feel proud about is that we're not really killing this relationship. We're actually really improving it. We're allowing people to be efficient at what they need to do, multitask, be able to get in an order faster, uh, get the response faster, but there's still communication. There's no reason that somebody won't pick up a phone and talk about generally relationship or stuff like that or how we're we doing. Actually, it's a really good way to keep a customer happy. You know, we, we, we're a digital company. We talk right, to our right. customers, right? We don't only send them emails. But again, when it comes to actually doing the day-to-day -day mundane work, that's what people are already uh, assuming that should be digitalized, automated as much as possible, make them successful and allow them to be uh, productive in their workplace. Okay. Well, you know, I, 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 I want to make sure I give you a chance to kind of describe what this, what, what a, a, a well-designed B2B platform, uh, e-commerce platform looks like. And I, I know you've got kind of a, a little case study that you can show us. Uh, maybe you can just show us a couple slides here and just talk us. I'm, I'm more kind of interested in the flow in, in how this works. And uh, maybe you can sh show that to us really briefly here. Uh, there we go. Yep, there we go. Animal, yep. Animal Supply Company. Perfect. Yeah, so Animal Supply Company is a, a pet supply uh, uh, distributor. They're actually founded in 1987. They're uh, one of the largest uh, uh, companies in the U.S. Um, they have, you know, over 7,000 uh, retail customers, um, ranging from mom and pops to large uh, chain stores, um, and uh, about 15,000 outlets. So uh, they're really an enormous business they have many sellers and many buyers that they work with again being a distributor they're in the middle you can almost think about it as a marketplace right because you have multiple buyers and multiple sellers interacting um they have about 21 facilities all over the country and they offer e-fulfillment and and they employ over 1300 so a big organization uh came to us from almost like a pure pen and paper kind of world right so okay. and they were trying to kind of transform how they actually uh operate so some of the challenges that uh, they were kind of uh, facing well first of all there was a big as you mentioned there was a big resistance from their sales team right they sure. they really were uh worried about uh, losing uh so you kind of foresaw what we got to talk about here so they really were uh fearing that losing the relationship the kind of individual uh contact with their uh, team uh with their uh, customers sorry uh, but uh, that's something that they were really worried about and we were working with them on. Uh, there was also the customers that were resisting the change, right? They were not sure that they're going to get the same pricing and the same negotiation uh, capabilities, right? And they really wanted to keep everything as uh, as static as possible. So they're really good pushback from both ways. That's why I said we are a lot of times we're come come in as a, as a consultant and as a counselor rather than uh, just uh, a technology company. Um, and uh, even internally across the board, there were a lot of um, resistance to automation and fear and stuff. Again, if it's broken, why fix it, right? If right, it's not right. broken, why fix it? A lot of this attitude in the company. Um, but they still wanted to invest in tr this transformation. They kind of hit you know, some uh, plateau. They wanted to continue growing. They wanted to uh, increase sales, be able to offer uh, more to their customers. So um, they wanted to add all kinds of functionality and features that were not available to them in the existing systems that they had. Um, and they were starting to really great uh, to gain a lot of uh, new customers that were asking them for digital, asking them to, to have all kinds of um, abilities to get specials and, um, and all kinds of coupons. And that uh, we saw actually when we, um, they, they launched or enabled our coupon module, for example, in uh, their system. Okay. And they saw a huge uh, gain in the buying experience, even in the B2B world. Again, something that customers were expecting in the B2C, you know, to get a coupon and, you know, that maybe promotes them to buying. But it actually transitioned really, really well into the B2B uh, use case here, where once they had launched that um, kind of module of uh, uh, promotions and coupons, 
it actually motivated their customers to use the online portal rather than call the the sales rep because a lot of times the sales sure. rep would not offer them everything you know they were not starting to list them oh you have this special and this coupon and that they would just say what do you need and this is our price initially we had about 10 percent of the company's uh, uh orders uh move over to digital and it wasn't a big success uh but um what happened well COVID hit and that kind of acted as a an accelerator for the whole process. Um, about 200 plus of their customers moved uh, during this time from uh, manual ordering to um, to digital. Uh, another 20% increase in their digital sales in the Q1 of 2020 versus Q1 in 2019. So, so again, with this um, uh, increase um, they saw in Q1 of, uh, of 2020 during the COVID, it was actually a huge spike. Again, something that they would not be able to um, to kind of accommodate with their sales team without scaling up the sales team, which was not a good time to do during COVID. But having it digital, they were able to kind of um, a refer, a refer people like, look, we're busy, but use the digital platform and you'll be able to uh, actually put in your order. And that's what we saw. So we saw, like I said, 200 uh, plus of their users uh, moving to, uh, or their customers moving to the online portal rather than using the phone for, for ordering. And it caused for an additional 19% uh, increase in their sales um, of uh, Q1 versus Q1 of 2019. Okay. Um, a big thing uh, in B2B is scalability. So, um, they really had a huge spike in uh, demand, uh, especially in uh, late March during all of April. Um, you know, we really saw about uh, 3x of their average uh, day um, uh, revenue coming through our portals. And choosing a platform that can actually scale was uh, very important because of this use case. If we would fail them on that um, spike that they were uh, enjoying, I guess, during everybody else suffering during COVID, uh, they would not be able to use and kind of um, uh, monetize on this uh, uh, need and demand that they were seeing. So again, we were able to scale for them. We served 3x of the revenues on an average of a day, uh, and the system just scaled with their needs. Well, Yoav, thanks for spending time with us today, and and thanks for kind of uh, kind of describe. It makes a lot more sense to me what you're talking about. That the I hope so. <laughs> the, the, the importance here is is kind of that entire flow that that digitally the sales process and the purchasing process is is digitalized all the way all the way through and it sounds like what you're saying is there's this this tools are still there to maintain those relationships that are valuable for for the salespeople, and you just have to kind of convince like uh, you mentioned as, as with animal supply you have to kind of convince them up front that no trust me we're not taking away your relationships we're going to enhance the relationships absolutely and and make your customers happy so again it's a happy customer is a customer that uh, you retain. That's uh, the bottom line. Um, the demands will start coming from customers. So it's it's better to, to be one step ahead of your customers, have uh, the systems prepared for them to use it. You can always offer them to pick up the phone. Like I said, it's not, it's not a necessarily canceling your sales team. I really feel that we're uh, enabling the sales team to be uh, more productive, uh, be able to give a better customer experience to your customers. Excellent. Okay, well, you have Kuttner. Co-founder of Oro, developers of the B2B e-commerce platform, Oro Commerce, as well as Oro CRM. Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Hey, Thank nope. you. That's it. And that is our show for today. As usual, if there is someone you would like to see on the show or some product you would like to see on the show or some topic you would like us to cover, just send those ideas to us at qdl at qualitydigest.com and we will try our best to get those people or things onto the show. Thanks for joining us today and we will see you at the next QDL. So long.